Welcome again to the podcast of the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. I'm Sven Hosford, and we are a collaboration of journalists and integrative medicine professionals in Western Pennsylvania. We like to discuss uh, all things related to lifestyle medicine and smart choices that people can make. Talk to the latest scientists, which we'll be doing today. Today is uh, July 22nd, uh, 2014, and we are here in the middle of swelter season. So uh, we are uh, live here from the Sorgatron Towers uh, in Beachview, Beachwood. What kind of beach is it? It's beach something. It's a, there's a beach in the name. And I uh, want to make sure you look for the summer issue of our magazine. It's been out on the street for a month or so. It's the uh, lifestyle medicine handy little journal that you'll find in waiting rooms, health food stores, and yoga studios all over Western Pennsylvania. You can subscribe on our website, journaloflifestylemedicine.com. You can actually email me at svenhosford at gmail.com. We record here live every Tuesday at four o'clock and it's live on live.sorgatronmedia.com and on the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. And then uh, we put it out on YouTube, iTunes, Spreaker and Stitcher. That's just such a fun word to say, Spreaker. Coming up in future podcasts, next week, we've got Dr. Lori Lankowitz. She's our favorite PT, a physical therapist with a PhD and an MBA, uh, uh, an ERA of, uh, no, forget that. That's a dumb joke. Uh, she's got a, um, she's really good at integrative medicine and uh, she'll be with us and we'll be having some fun talking about how Physical therapist is actually a good way to get good mental health. In two weeks, we'll be talking to uh, Noreen McGinnis Campbell on what it's like to be a uh, world famous in Pittsburgh store owner. Everybody knows the McGinnis sisters, the uh, great health food stores or the food stores that, uh, and now she's moving into a career as a health coach. So uh, that'll be a lot of fun. She's a great lady and lots of fun to talk to. And in three weeks, we just nailed this one down today. I'm real excited to announce we're going to be talking to Chef AJ. Yes, Chef AJ. That's probably not right. It's Chef AJ, uh, world famous author of Unprocessed and Chef to the Stars in LA. And she'll be joining us on August 12th in three weeks right here on this very podcast. Coming up in this podcast, I'm real excited to be talking to somebody that uh, I just find really fascinating. So in the inside back cover of our issue, you saw this pretty woman's face, and you probably wondered, what the heck has that got to do with integrative medicine or lifestyle medicine uh, besides taking good care of your skin, and why is skin so important? Well, we're going to talk to the atomic physicist who developed the technology around ASEA. It's called redox signaling molecules. We're going to find out what that means, and uh, it's going to be very interesting, I promise you. Dr. Gary Samuelson will be our guest. But first, let's take a look at the calendar for the upcoming weeks here. This is of interest to uh, integrated medicine professionals and anybody interested in integrated medicine. So first, last, and always, it's yoga, 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 everywhere yoga this week. On Saturday, the uh, World Magazine Yoga Fest is happening at Point State Park, 12 solid hours uh, starting with meditation, ending with the kirtan. They're doing it right. The great folks over at World Magazine are going to have an all-day yoga fest right at the point. And then on Sunday, uh, there's a new yoga place that's uh, going to be going in uh, right across the street from PNC Park. It's called Urban Elements and Psychology. Psychology, that's pretty cute. Uh, it's a yoga Pilates and cycling place at 208 Federal Street. They're doing a pop-up yoga little thing at 10 a.m. on the North Shore, uh, right out in front of uh, Heinz Field, I think it is there. It's uh, for the yins and yang crowd here in uh, Pittsburgh. Power yoga is what they do down there at Urban Elements and Psychology. Uh, looking forward to having that. That's Sunday coming up. Uh, August 3rd, we're going to be doing a Social Joe Hour, 11 a.m. over at the Pittsburgh Public Market. You're going to hang out with Trenton and myself and Mike Sorg, the bionic man behind all these podcasts. And we'll be inviting all the uh, integrated medicine professionals to be there as well. And then on August 6th, it'd be a chance for you to either be there live or watch the podcast of Dr. Uma Puragala. She'll be talking uh, at the Psychi Psychiatric Grand Rounds at St. Clair. So you can watch that one on the St. Clair YouTube channel. Uh, or you can come on out to export and join us live 
Uh, Dr. Uma is a really interesting uh, person. She'll be talking about quantum healing. Another organically social event for August 16th. That's a Saturday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Get up early and get on down to the Pittsburgh Public Market. Join all the thousands of people that are going to be there. The Pittsburgh Tech Council and the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine are going to sponsor the Wellness Meet and Greet. We'll get our integrated medicine group out there as well. It's going to be a great chance to uh, mingle, have some great food, and socialize on a Saturday morning. So I'm really looking forward to this. Trenton's a great guy. He's got a great organization. Lots of fun people in this uh, in his group. Uh, September 12th, you want to put this one on the calendar. Uh, you probably uh, remember, hopefully you remember Patty Lemmer's podcast on this uh, very station at this very time. She was talking about autism and her book, Outsmarting Autism. Well, on September 12th at Phipps Conservatory, you can meet her and a couple of other very big names in the business, some local celebrities, uh, experts in the field of vaccinations. It's going to be a vaccination conversation at Phipps Conservatory. It's going to be a great opportunity to uh, talk to Patty. She's a really smart person. If you have not seen this podcast, I really recommend you go back and watch the podcast uh, with Patty Lemmer. And then in November, yes, November, that's what I'm talking about, Pittsburgh School of Massage, Seven Springs, get your CEs. You know all about it. We've been talking about it. Uh, if you want the details, be sure to head up to the Pittsburgh School of Massage website or ours to link to it. And also be sure to uh, find out all the information you need about Dan Wagner's trip to Ecuador coming up in November 19th. We did have a conversation. I think that's available on our website as well and our YouTube and so forth. So that's it for the calendar this week. So today we're talking about redux signaling molecules. We're going to find out just what those are and why we should care. We'll discuss it with an atomic physicist who's been doing the research into metabolism, mitochondria, and probably several other things that begin with M in the medical profession. He's the one that's uh, developed this method to create these molecules, if I'm understanding this, uh, has developed a line of products, including a skincare product, which is very revolutionary. We'll be talking about that. It's actually good medicine. Dr. Gary Samuelson is a researcher, an author, and one of the scientific minds behind the ASEA product line that use this technology. He was awarded his PhD in atomic medical physics uh, from the University of Utah, and he's been working on stabilizing nanoparticle structures integral to several promising technologies. He serves as the chair of the ASEA Science Advisory Council. Welcome, Dr. Gary Samuelson. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Did I get all that right? Uh, is all of that information I just said about you true and accurate and to the best of your knowledge, uh, uh, honest? <laughs> yes, it's honest, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> a little bit puffy. <laughs> a, little, a little puffy. All right. So we'll, we'll, try to, we'll try to tear you down to size here. What the heck is atomic medical physics uh, and, and what, what, do you, what exactly do you study? Uh, atomic physics has to do with how molecules fit together, or atoms fit together. Uh, you use the tools of uh, quantum theory and other such things to realize how these molecules fit together in uh, the field structures and et cetera. This is especially important in the uh, processes of life, of course, which are the most fascinating types of processes that exist mm -hmm. uh, with molecules. Um, where everything that uh, takes place in a living cell, for example, has to do with tiny, these tiny little micro machines that have to communicate with one another and uh, coordinate their activities with one another. And it all has to do with atomic physics and molecular physics. And uh, that's exactly the reason why I wanted to study this in the very beginning, because my goodness, I wanted to figure out how, what made up life, what made it work. Yeah, that's actually my next question. Was there some specific uh, event in your life or something that spurred you on into this topic? I'm sorry, I, I missed the audio on that. Oh, I'm just asking, was there something uh, specific uh, in your life or, or some event that got you interested in this topic? Or how did you get started down this road? My father was, had a PhD in physics also. I've always been a curious kid. So uh, when I was a little boy, uh, I would be the little guy that would, uh, instead of playing in the playground and trying to make baskets, I'd be taking apart and dissecting leaves. 
<laughs> I'd be doing uh, things like that to try to understand how this beautiful structure and functional life actually exists. So I guess I was kind of born with it. So you I was born with this curiosity, and it brought me to the point where I, I uh, got my PhD in physics in order to try to figure it out. Well, I saw you started a blog this year, uh, and so in reading some of your blog posts, I'd say you're also a little bit of an artist uh, and perhaps a, a little bit of a um, spiritual seeker. Is that also accurate? Uh, that's true. Um, when I was also young, I, I had the, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, um, it was a paradox. You know, I wondered if God existed and if these things are true, uh, then, uh, and so I, for several years, I looked through a great deal of spiritual literature. And so, yes, I do have that part of me too. Hmm. Um, and actually it's part of the, uh, reason why I became so analytical because I wanted to figure out if God exists or not. Well, it's, it's very interesting paradox that most of the, greatest scientists are also some of the most spiritual people because uh, it's like Socrates says, the more you, the more you know, the more you know, you don't know. And so you, I would think that somebody like you does uh, research into just mind bending aspects of how amazing the human body is. It must just be awe inspiring sometimes. I don't think anybody really who understands the magnitude of physical process and really what the world is all about and uh, not at least consider the question, is there a other intelligent being or design happening out there? It seems and like uh, it got to be somebody smarter than us that's running this whole thing somehow. So Yeah. Well, let's get to the topic. So you've, uh, you didn't coin this phrase, but you use it a lot. It's redox signaling molecules. So let's take it one step at a time. What's a, what's a redox? Okay, well, redox means the reduction and oxidation of molecules. It takes ah. place in nature every time there is a, um, a reaction, a chemical reaction. And so um, in the sense of what happens inside the cells and uh, what, what I'm interested in in my area of research, uh, signaling takes place when there's a reduction or an oxidation. You've probably heard of oxidants. Sure. And oxidants oxidize things. Reductants do the opposite. They actually um, deliver uh, electrons rather than take away e electrons. Uh, so reduction is the delivery of electrons, and oxidation means the, the uh, removal of electrons. Okay. Uh, and this happens uh, all the time in the fluids of life or the vital fluids that are inside the cells and all around the cells. The atoms and molecules need to be able to uh, react one with another through this medium of salt and water. So they end up oxidizing and reducing this medium. And the process of doing that is called redox or short. Okay. Um, yeah. So and ahead. so then they signal, there's a signaling that happens between the cells? Uh, actually, between the molecules. Between the molecules, I'm sorry. Yeah, right. between the molecules. For antioxidants, for example, they're able to take uh, oxidants and reduce them in, into uh, redu their reduced form. And uh, that's a sort of a signaling because every time these little molecules uh, are reduced, they change shape and function. So uh, according to the redox potential, or the potential of reduction and oxidation in these fluids, the whole mechanism of life and all of the messengers that are passing through and all of the things that are taking place, including the expression of genes, um, are affected. And the uh, genes then express the molecules and the things that are ne necessary in order to restore a homeostatic balance or redox potential, correct redox potential to these fluids. Okay. So it's a homeostatic balance, a restoration of balance inside the cells that we're, we're talking about. Um, okay, so that's the, the, that's the stabilizing process then. That Right. Okay. And it takes place through signaling. So when there are, uh, for example, too many oxidants in a cell, it signals the genes inside the nucleus that they're, they're need, they need to produce certain things to fix the problem. 
Okay. And uh, hopefully then that uh, action from the genes will fix the problem and homeostatic balance will be restored again in the cell. It's a signaling process. So very important to uh, detection of um, damaged cells as well as repair and replacement of damaged cells inside living tissue. Okay, so when we then ingest antioxidants, all that good stuff, the, the blueberries and goji berries that we should be eating, then tell us how that interacts in this, in this process. Well, often you'll have an excess of oxidants inside the body, which are there because of cell damage. So maybe, I, could I back off a step here sure, and just sure. kind of get to this? Inside the cell, there are mitochondria, and they're producing these signaling molecules in large quantities. There are anywhere from 200 to 5,000 mitochondria in every cell. They produce uh, these signaling molecules, which are uh, included in uh, the species uh, redox uh, molecules. Hydrogen peroxide, superoxides, hypochlorites, very reactive species. Uh, they're called reactive oxygen species. They produce these, these reactive oxygen species. The antioxidants are there to, to eliminate the oxidants, and right. they do so on a continual basis. When there's damage to the cell, that balance is disturbed, and the oxidants start to build up. That marks or signals damage in the tissue, in the cell. That buildup of oxidants is called oxidative stress. It's actual a signaling process, very much like um, smoke signals. Smoke has oxid oxidants in it. It has free radicals in it. It can be bad for your environment. Well, these oxidants inside the cell, if they're not taken care of and controlled by the cell, they build up, and these smoke signals then are the mechanisms that tell the cell something is wrong and uh, start the process by which the cell repairs itself. So you're starting to see how important this process is. Uh, the, these redox signaling processes in the cell actually are the fundamental processes that detect damage in the cell and then start the repair and replace mechanisms to either repair the cell or kill the cell and then have it replaced by normal, healthy surrounding cells. I think I actually uh, even understood that. Uh, that was uh, very well said. Uh, you know, for those of us with smaller minds where you need to use small words and, and speak short sentences, I think I actually did follow that. Um, so the, tell us what the uh, metaphorical smoke signals might be uh, the, as they as they express themselves in our physical body, we're talking about inflammation here, right? Any kind of inflammation in all parts of the body. That's right. Uh, one of them is hydrogen peroxide, superoxides, hypochlorites. Um, these are the uh, actually more than metaphorical. These are the true redox signaling molecules, as I call them. Okay. That are inside the uh, cell to to signal these things. Um. When, when, the, when something goes wrong, like I mentioned before, the cell can either repair itself, but it has another mechanism by which it will kill itself. It's called apoptosis. Right. And this happens when there's too much smoke and it hasn't gone away for about two hours. Okay. And the cell then will start a process of killing itself. This is very important, by the way. Cells, for example, that do not have these processes in place, like cancer cells, for example, ah. become immortal, unable to kill themselves, unable to detect damage, and unable to repair themselves. And so that, that is uh, actually where the mitochondria have broken down. They no longer are carrying on this network of redox signaling that helps this process take place. And uh, we all know what happens then when a cancer cell turns rogue in our, right. in our body. Right. Well, this, uh, so we are talking about uh, this new field of science then called epigenetics, where you're, you've pretty well established that the field that the genes are in is more important than the actual genetic blueprint upon 
which it draws upon. Am I, am I saying that correctly? Oh, that is absolutely true. Okay. In the last 10 years of science, we have turned away from genetic expression to be what causes life to happen to the signaling messengers that uh, deliver the signals back and forth between the cells. I mean, one great um, example is stem cell technology. Mm -hmm. If you take a stem cell and put it in a heart, it will turn and, uh, into a heart cell. Well, how does it know that it should become a heart cell? Well, by the signaling messengers that are carrying the messages back and forth between the neighboring cells. They actually program the stem cell to become a heart cell. In fact, every cell in your body is programmed to act as it does, depending on the neighborhood that it sits right. in. Right. So this is why the process of cleaning up and detoxing uh, and, and keeping a clean environment in our system is so important. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, absolutely. Okay. So you've now uh, m developed the technology to... Uh, you have product lines. Uh, you have first. You started with the uh, ASEA. What is it? A water or a drink that um, provides these molecules that do everything you just talked about. Yeah. Okay. Um, for, for the first time in in history, we've been able, able to take been able <laughs> to take these molecules that are produced inside the mitochondria outside of the cell and preserve them in a stabilized form. So basically what we do with ASEA is we take pure salt water, that's sodium chloride in water, and it goes through the same process that the mitochondria uses to produce these signaling molecules inside the cell. And we found a, a way or a method in order to preserve or stabilize these molecules so that they don't vanish and go away. Inside the cells, they vanish in a millionth of a second. Hmm. And uh, when I first came up on this, uh, this method to produce them, I saw that they were preserved for 10 minutes, many hundreds of thousands of times more than I thought it should be possible in science. And so uh, as a, an atomic physicist, I wanted to find out, well, what was the story here? Why were they preserved so long? Found out that there are quantum mechanical reasons why these free radicals can be shielded and preserved inside a salt water solution outside of the body. And ah. that's what this uh, new ASEA technology is. It's these are these same signaling molecules that are produced when you're young in large amounts inside the body uh, that um, now are able to be supplemented um, when you get older or when you have dam cell damage that uh, compromises the mitochondrial uh, function inside your cells. See, now you've, you've even piqued my interest even more. You've said the word quantum physics, and uh, my mind is already kind of melting, so I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole, to, to say a very bad pun. But um, so there, is, there are elements of, of quantum physics and the whole, uh, as, as we talked about, epigenetics and that whole understanding is what's going into the stabilization of those molecules long enough, as you say, to be able to be deliverable as a supplement. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, everything is quantum physics, actually. On the atomic level, everything is quantum. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't wait to have you back and we'll talk about that as our conversation. Well, let's talk <laughs> about the, uh, let's talk about your uh, new skincare product. Uh, you have, uh, t tell us what it is and how it works and how you've applied this technology of the redox signaling uh, for a skincare product. Well, uh, the ASEA product is difficult to measure because it, it takes care of cell damage that are, has exist inside your body. Um, we decided, or at least the ASEA company decided that if we were able to find a way to apply it to skin, the skin would be able to, again, go over, undergo this uh, repair and replace mechanism, and it makes skin look better, which is probably more um, important for some people than <laughs> their health. <laughs> so so uh, what we did Sadly, is yeah. um, created these little structures or this gel structure that would be able to hold these redox signaling molecules um, in, in their stable form without destabilizing them and put them in there about five times the, the um, potency. So now uh, it's absolutely easy to 
manifest to see what these molecules are doing. If you have a, a skin that has a rash or a, a problem uh, and of any sort, I have forgot to mention, by the way, that these molecules are also in this form antimicrobial. They kill every single bug, including mm. the resistance strain, on contact within 30 seconds. Everything wow. that we've been able to test. Wow. And you, it's perfectly safe for the body. You can put them in your eyes, ears, nose, mouth, uh, in any part of the body, any tissue. You can even put them inside the body uh, without without any toxic effect whatsoever. Well, that's... So we have something... Yeah, that is that's absolutely... Amazing. Well, we have a That's couple of funny. pictures that uh, we, we got sent uh, from the publicity department. Uh, do we have those ready, Mike? Are they up? Uh, we're looking at the crow's feet example here. Uh, I'm sure you've seen that picture that was sent out. And so we're seeing, do you know what the time frame is on this? How long this person's been using the skincare to for these kind of results? Yeah, a lot of these come from the research uh, you know, done by Dermatest in Germany. And they're 28 days. That's why it's called Renew 28. In 28 days, in 28 days you, have a, you have this sort of effect. A reduction of... Yeah, so we're looking right. at, for the people listening to this, uh, we're, we're looking at, uh, uh, we'll, uh, yeah, we should link up these pictures on our, on our site, but we're looking at a, a really dramatic change in a, a woman's uh, crow's feet around her eyes. Uh, let's take a look at the next picture, Mike. Um, and this is a, a scalp. It's in black and white here. Um, he was suffering from, do you know what this one was exactly, uh, Gary? Well, I can't, I, I can't comment on exactly what, but it's simply blotches. Um, but it really uh, cleared up. The blotches are, are very clear. Yeah, uh, you, these happen when sun is exposed, or skin is exposed to sun in older people. They get these blotches. Some of them have to be removed surgically. Uh, and uh, uh, this Renew 28 then was able to do that in just a few days. Um, That's pretty amazing. How long has this yeah. product been out on the market now? The uh, gel has only been out, the Renew 28, about four months now or five months. Okay. Um, well, uh, Harold Corner, who's our local rep here, um, he is just high as a kite every time he talks about uh, all of the products. Uh, uh, he's been taking the, um, the the drink for quite a while. He's loved that. And he's now uh, talking about the skincare like there's no tomorrow. So I know you got one big uh, enthusiastic person here in Pennsylvania. We have many. <laughs> I can believe that. Well, now you got me. Uh, and I'm sorry. Well, like you said, it's, you know, it's people are more concerned about how they look. But the skin, as I understand it, is the largest organ in the body. And it's one of the most important organs for the process of detoxing. Am I right about that? That's correct. For protection, for detoxification, for sensory inputs. And uh, also, you know, the, the sweat and other things uh, help to eliminate. It's a part of the very important uh, process of elimination of these toxins from the body. Now, this is just a quick aside in, uh, to an area. Of, I don't know if you're, uh, this is your area of uh, expertise, but the actual act of sweating, um, you know, from a lot of different perspectives, uh, from the Native American perspective, it's one of the most important ways to detox. Uh, exercise enthusiasts, personal trainers tell you it's so important. Martial artists tell you it's so important to sweat every day. Uh, Dr. Brian Clement from the Hippocrates Institute talks about taking a sauna every day. What's your understanding about skin specifically as related to detoxing and, and the importance of actual sweating uh, uh, on a, and yeah. how frequently you should do that? Well, as you said, the skin is the barrier between you and the rest of the world. It keeps the uh, toxins out and it also keeps the, uh, the, the sweat and such has more surface area in order to uh, extract the toxin than, than almost any other part of the body. So um, inside the sweat glands, as well as inside the kidneys, there are these little uh, beautifully designed uh, tubes, tubules, that are able to collect the toxins in large amounts. And imagine now all over the whole body being able to eliminate toxins it is actually the uh, the biggest organ or the, the most important organ as far as this is concerned, besides possibly the kidneys. 
Sure. In eliminating in eliminating waste. Have your has your uh, Renew twenty eight been shown to um, accelerate or improve that process? What the Renew twenty eight does is it helps to maintain healthy skin cells and to help the body detect and repair and replace the damaged skin cells. So we were talking about the signaling process before. It works on the skin. It works every place in the body. In fact, it works in plants, animals, and every form of life on Earth. Huh. Uh, yeah, the, this redox signaling is the, probably the most fundamental process by which cells detect and repair damage. Well, I'm fascinated so, we haven't heard more about it from other research labs and other places. You will. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, epigenetics uh, well, is becoming the uh, qu quite a buzzword in, in a lot of the, the more progressive thinkers around. But let me mention this. Uh, you're familiar with uh, James Watson and Click, and the work they did on the, the DNA structure? No, no. Okay. Well, James Watson was the guy who dis discovered the helical structure of DNA. Okay. Uh, back back in the time, I don't remember how many years ago, but what he he's a internationally respected and renowned uh, scientist. He now has dedicated his life to redox signaling and understanding uh, reactive oxygen species inside cells. He is now asking for billions of dollars of research in this subject. He says that redox signaling and the uh, technology that will come forth from it is more important than his discovery of DNA. Wow. And uh, so he, he's excited about it. <laughs> I'd say. And he's not the only one. <laughs> I'd say. There, there will be many, many uh, people who, under, who understand this technology who uh, get very, very excited about the possibilities that it presents. Well, this is really fascinating. And and before, uh, when we were talking earlier today on the phone, you said something to me that I found so intriguing. I wanted to bring it up here on the podcast. And it's kind of what we're talking about. There's all this amazing research that's happening uh, out there. Um, and uh, it doesn't always seem like it's getting in, in, in the, like the, the knowledge isn't getting to the frontline people who could actually use it. Who's doing most of the best research today? I mean, not, not, there, not in areas, not yeah. specific names. It's really a loaded uh, question there. <laughs> um, I, I have I've heard it uh, in my career since I'm involved in medical research and have uh, been all around the world. I've, I've worked at uh, Harvard Medical School and seen some of the projects that they've worked on. And I've seen other areas. There are wonderful things happening all over the world. We have over 5,000, for example, articles written in uh, peer-reviewed journals about technologies that could rid us of cancer, AIDS, malaria, most of the things that, that uh, plague the earth today. And we cannot commercialize these technologies for uh, various reasons. Uh, they're too expensive. They can't be patented. You can't make profit on them. Uh, you, there are several reasons why these technologies, which do exist and are viable, cannot cannot make it out there. So all of good scientists are doing excellent and extraordinary work in uh, the field uh, of medicine. But the problem is actually a political our economic problem that it doesn't allow us to get these solutions to the people who need them. Well, if I can, if I can uh, feed back to you, what I, what I kind of heard is that um, unless there's a good way to make money from a process or a product, uh, it's often, even if it's more effective, it's often not pursued in, in, in lieu of other processes or products, which are more, um, yeah, profitable, basically. Well, well, of course. Uh, I mean, uh, you can't you can't patent a, a carrot. <laughs> well, and that's part of the problem. You can't patent broccoli, and uh, and, and uh, broccoli. If you're going to spend eight hundred million to one point two billion dollars in research, you've got to have some way to pay for that research. 
only the large pharmaceuticals really have those sort of resources. Institutions, governments even bend under the weight of uh, the type of investment that's necessary and they're, it's very risky. Yeah. And so why would you study vitamin E or something that's easily accessible at your corner market um, when uh, you can't make a profit on it? You can't patent it or, uh, you know, secure the technology. Sure. I think the health and wellness field, to tell you the truth, is is one of the solutions because, yes, they can make a profit on selling wellness in, in this situation. Right. Right. Well, that's what, uh, you know, that's what our whole mission here is with our Journal of Lifestyle Medicine is to find ways that that work for the people consuming it, but also uh, manage to allow the professionals to earn a, a decent living and an honest living. So good points all around. Well, I want to thank you, Dr. Gary Samuelson. This has been a fascinating conversation, and I got to say, I'd love to have you back on where we can just talk quantum physics and epigenetics. I think that would be a loads of fun. Okay. <laughs> so that will do it for today's conversation on the podcast. Join us again next week uh, for the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine podcast. You can find us on Facebook, iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher. Uh, and of course, on the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine.com. Look for our integrated medicine professionals group on meetup.com. And until next week, Yuns, be careful out there. <laughs>